Russia is likely attempting to use Iranian proxies to indirectly confront the West, including in support of Ukraine, according to the American Institute for the Study of War, ISW. Analysts have recalled a recent article by the Wall Street Journal, which reported on October the 7th that Russian arms dealer Viktor Bout, a deputy from the Ulyanovsk region assisted Russia in reaching an agreement with the Yemeni Houthis. This deal involves the sale of weapons worth $10 million amid increasing reports of potential Russian arms supplies to the Houthis and deepening Russia-Iran cooperation. According to Wall Street Journal sources, the initial shipments would primarily consist of AK-74 assault rifles and the Houthis have also discussed the potential transfer of Cornet anti-tank missiles and anti-air weapons. According to sources, it remains unclear whether Bout negotiated the agreement on behalf of the Kremlin or merely with its tacit approval. WSJ noted that the transfer has not yet occurred and the source of the weapons is still unknown. The Wall Street Journal also mentioned that shipments could begin as early as October 2024 at the port of Hodaida, disguised as food supplies. In response, Bout and Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov denied the media reports. Russia has reportedly been involved in Iranian-brokered secret talks to transfer Russian Yakont anti-ship cruise missiles and other military equipment to the Houthis, but it is unclear whether these transfers have or will occur, added the Wall Street Journal. In summary, analysts continue to assess that Russia is likely seeking to use Iranian proxies for indirect confrontation with the West and to shape the Western decision-making process, including regarding support for Ukraine. Russia likely aims to leverage Iranian proxies to indirectly confront the West and shape Western decision-making, particularly to deter the West from supporting Ukraine over fears of Russian escalation against the West, including escalating in a different theater. The Institute concluded, over the past year of attacks on Israel and international shipping, the Iran-backed Houthis have delivered a strong military performance. They are seemingly aiming to be the first in, last out, meaning the first to cross key thresholds during the war and the last to stop fighting despite numerous allied strikes inside Yemen, facing weak domestic opposition and having arguably solidified their line of supply from Iran, the Houthis are stronger, more technically proficient and more prominent members of the axis of resistance than they were at the war's outset. They can now exploit new opportunities by cooperating with other axis players in Iraq as well as with Russia, potentially offering Yemen as a platform from which Iran can deploy advanced weapons against Israel and the West. An ad on social media promised young African women a free plane ticket and money for a trip to Europe. Just take a test game to test your knowledge of 100 Russian words, the publication said. This is reported by the Associated Press. But instead of a program of work and study in areas such as the hotel, business and catering, some of them only learned upon arriving in the steppes of Tatarstan that they would be working in a weapons factory and assembling Iranian attack drones. 
Some women complained of long hours under constant surveillance, unfulfilled salary promises and working with harsh chemicals that left marks on their skin. To fill the acute labor shortage, Russia is recruiting women aged 18 to 22 from regions such as Uganda, Rwanda, Kenya, South Sudan, Sierra Leone and Nigeria as well as Sri Lanka. The campaign is spreading to other Asian countries and Latin America. Thus, in one of the key sectors of the armed production in the Russian Federation, low-skilled people mainly from African countries work. They work together with 16-year-old vacational school students at a plant in the special economic zone Alabuga, about 1,000 kilometers east of Moscow. I really don't know how to make drones, said one African woman who quit her job at home and accepted the Russian offer. The AP analyzed satellite images of the complex and its internal documents spoke to several African women who were there and monitored hundreds of videos from an online recruitment program called Alabuga Start to get a sense of life inside the plant. One of the African women documented her journey in detail, taking selfies at the airport, taking pictures of lunch on the plane and a flight map. She emphasized that she was flying to Europe, but when she arrived in Alabuga and saw what she had to do, she realized that she had been deceived. The company is also engaged in the production of drones, nothing more. I regret and I cursed the day when I started doing all this. The woman explained, let us recall that according to analysts, the Russian Federation had almost doubled the production of Shaheds and is exceeding its plan for the year.